So today we're going to start a brand new series, and I'm going to be honest, um, out of all the series I've ever done, I think this one is the most important one. Um, I believe this is one is going to be the most impactful, enlightening, and life-changing one that we have ever went over. Um, and the reason I say that is because God has pressed upon my heart the urgency and the importance of this particular message for this particular season. Somebody say season. Okay, so uh, I need you to pull out your notepads, pull out your phones, pull out whatever you take notes with um, because you're going to want to take notes. This is uh, going to be a critical message that's going to be impact to your Christianity, okay? And we're going to walk progressively through one of the most life-changing subjects that we have ever done that will change not just the trajectory of our church, but the trajectory of your individual life. Amen? Now, here's the thing. Disclaimer. Uh, this type of teaching comes with warfare, okay? So try your best not to miss a Sunday, uh, things is going to happen this week that's going to be, be like, what just happened? Uh, just preparing for this message, <sighs> it was a lot going on. Emotionally, time-wise, it was just a lot going on. And one writer says it like this. He says, we fail to see results in our lives because we have not taken into consideration the reality of an invisible evil force that is opposing our efforts to progress into the life God has intended for us. Do y'all know who the evil force is? Yeah. Ooh, say it again. Yeah. Yes, Satan, the devil. Um, the apostle Paul says that we should be aware of the activity of the enemy so we don't fall victim or prey to the wild strategies and methods of Satan. He's real. Y'all got that? The devil is real. Just as you can pinch yourself and say, ouch. He's very real. Um, and I said it last week. Know what takes your focus and avoid it. Know what draws you away from God and avoid that thing. Some of us don't be needing prayer. We just need to avoid some stuff. <laughs> he does say resist the devil and what? He'll... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So uh, we got we to gotta be careful. Um, now, everything is not the devil. Sometimes things just come with life. However, we look back over the years, we could see different agendas being pushed into our government, our society, our schools, our music, our culture, even our churches, which has a lingering stench of the workings of our great enemy, the devil. Times has become a lot worse for all of us. Anybody notice the shift in the world? We have been bombarded with, by CNN, Fox News, ABC, all these different genres supposedly informing us of current events, but instead have become modes of propaganda to shape and control what we believe. The enemy has been allowed access to influence and infiltrate our society, threatening the very existence of truth. Somebody say truth. truth. Hmm. Where are we going with this? So today, we're going to start a brand new series called Trading Truth. Somebody say Trading Truth. Trading truths. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and pull up Genesis 3 for me. Uh, Genesis 3. Now, go ahead and start my clock, please, because I don't want to hold the people all day. You know, the very lie we tell. Oh, we're trying to tell the truth, though, ain't we? I won't be before you long. So I'm not even going to say that this morning, okay? I'm not even going to go ahead and go against what I'm about to teach this morning. <laughs> go to Genesis 3 for me. Starting at the first verse, I'm going to read this from the NIV. Somebody say, New International version? Okay, never mind. NIV, Genesis 3. Let me know when you got it. 
Genesis, the third chapter. G- if you can't find Genesis, um, it's in the front. It's about right after table of contents, somewhere in up in there. It's in there, I promise. The fall. You got Genesis 3 for me, NIV? NIV. I'm going to read it. Here it is. In, in this particular version of the Bible, they call it the fall. Somebody say the fall. Interesting. Chapter 3, verse 1. Uh-oh. I got lost in my, my little iPad here. Sorry. Now, the serpent was more crafty. Somebody say crafty. Than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say? I don't know if he sounded like that or not. I'm just, just <laughs> creating some color here, okay? Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, well, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4 says, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. My. Verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Does that sound like a a scripture? 1 John 2 and 16. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Does it sound familiar? Mm. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband. What? Who was with her and he ate it. Then their eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. Mm. In one version, verse chapter, verse 6, it says that the woman, after speaking with the devil, the serpent, the woman was convinced that, well, maybe God didn't tell me the whole truth. Maybe you're right, serpent. This is, this is look good. And I want to jump to uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. You don't have to turn there. I just want to read it for, my, for your ears. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, the God of this age, who is that? The God of this age? That's Satan. Okay has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light. Somebody say, cannot see the light. light. Of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. That's 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Write that down. Go back and read that. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The God of this age, Satan, the God of this age, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So I want to begin part one of trading truth. Um, I want to teach from this idea, see the truth, ignore the lie. Okay? Somebody say, see the truth, ignore the lie. I want to say it one more time, see the truth, ignore the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this preaching presentation with this statement. Ready? Are you ready? Y'all going to talk back today? I mean, the the more y'all talk back, the faster I'm done. I'll get out your way. I promise. I'll get out of your way. I want to start with this this statement. Many people are being led astray because they have a truth they agree with laced with a lie. Many people are being led astray because they have a truth they agree with but is laced with a lie. We live in a society and culture where in the famous words of Jack Nicholson and a, a, a few good fellas, you can't handle the truth. Y'all remember that? 
you can't hand over the truth. And, and quite frankly, we live in a society, they can't handle the truth. Babe, how I look in this? Do I look big? Now, let's be honest. Do you want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> how did I sound when I was singing? Uh, mm. How was my sermon? Uh, you you could have did a little bit better on that one. Mm. Let's be honest. Nobody likes hearing truth. We live in a society where everybody wants a lie. Or they want a truth laced with a lie. I don't, I don't know. So watch this. So we become a society who don't want to hear the truth because it's easier to digest a lie even though it's killing us. Most reject truth because it's easier to digest the poison of a lie that's ki- killing us. That's crazy. But we do it all the time. Just taking in poison. Now, the effects of poison, it affects people differently, right? It may not get you right away. It may linger a while. So we live with a generation of people who are easily offended, confused, deceived, and led astray. Because they prefer their truth laced with poison, which is a lie. And whenever we deny truth, poison is allowed to spread. Whenever you reject truth, if you don't remember nothing else I say today, whenever you reject truth, you allow the lie, the poison, to spread. So then you have our government being poisoned, communities being poisoned, religion gets poisoned, our character, our minds, our very existence gets poisoned. Whenever we reject truth and accept a lie to fit our narrative. I said it like this. I said, we are trying to heal a problem with poison instead of with the antidote. (laughs) Somebody say, see the truth. Ignore the lie. Turn to Romans real quick. Write this scripture down, Romans 1. Romans 1 in the 18th verse. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm going to have to go there. Let's see. Romans 1, 18. Hold on, let me. Romans 1. Watch this. I just want to show y'all something. Because this is what, what is going on in today's time. Can, I just, can we just work the text just a little bit? I'm only eight minutes in. Just give, me, just give me a few more. Watch this. Romans 1 and 18. I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. It says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They suppress the truth. They justify their wickedness to suppress the truth. Does that make sense? Verse 19 says, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse For not knowing God. And then watch it says in 21. And this is a lot of scripture. I just just want to, I want y'all to, I want y'all to get this. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, watch this, their minds became dark and confused. This sounds very familiar. I don't know about y'all. Claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people, birds and animals and reptiles. 24, so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, 
they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded, verse 25, my whole point, they traded the truth about God for a lie. That's scripture. They traded the truth about God for a lie. And I wrote this down. You can never, listen to me carefully, you can never live a blessed, fruitful, for flourishing, and fulfilling life living a lie. Uh You cannot live a blessed life rejecting truth. It, 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 it gets under my skin when I see people cr- claiming Christianity and I see Christians out there, oh I, oh, I thank God for blessing me. Hold up, wait a minute. You live in contrary to the word of God and you think that's a blessing. That ain't a blessing, that's grace. That's mercy. Don't confuse God's blessing with grace. It's his grace that gives you something that you don't deserve. It's his mercy that gives you something that you, something that you do deserve and he don't give it to you, right? Does that make sense? So it, it annoys me. People make filthy rap music and be like, I thank God for winning this award. Like, fam, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold up. This ain't nothing but a blessing. Whoa, wait, hold on. Let's think this through. It's his grace and mercy. Never confuse the two. And it is Satan's job to keep us in the dark. What that mean? Darkness, ignorant. Not in the light, not in the truth. It's his job to keep us in the dark, to keep us unaware of the truth. He does not want you to know the truth. He does not want you to know the truth. It's part of his agenda. 2 Corinthians, we read it earlier, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, the God of this age has blinded the minds so that they cannot see the light. What is the light? Life can be compared to truth. The truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Is that clear? All right. John 18, uh, excuse me, John 8 and 12. Write this down. John 8 and 12. John 8 and 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the whoever, I don't care who you are, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. That's very clear, right? Is that clear enough? John 8 and 12, write that down. I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light, the truth of life. Write down John 12. John 12 and 46. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If you ever think about a season in your life where you felt like it was just a dark season, guess who got the light? Who? Jesus. Jesus. Whenever you feel like it's a dark situation, get to Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Do we live in the world? We do. He's the light of it. In the midst of Satan trying to keep us blinded and keep, whenever you're blinded, what? You can't see, right? It's dark. Everybody close your eyes for a second. Just close your eyes for a second. Is that dark or what? That's kind of scary, trying to navigate life with your eyes closed. You can't do that. This is why I say again. You need the light. You need the truth to have a blessed, fruitful, flourishing, and fulfilling life here on earth. Does that make sense? Can we keep going? Okay. So whenever we choose to remain in darkness, we avoid accepting the truth. You and I will never be able to have power. Somebody say power. (laughs) Over the enemy walking in darkness. 
I, I want to share something with you. I'm going to take a pause right there on that sermon. Okay. Now, this is, this is, this is totally out of the pocket. <laughs> there is a sermon series that I want all you guys to watch, all of you in here. It's called Chosen. It's a, it's a TV series about Jesus and the disciples. Very good content. It's better than half, 99.9 stuff on Netflix. So instead of filling your spirit with all that other stuff and reality TV and all that other stuff, fill your spirit with something that's going to help you grow spiritually and introduce you to light, pulling you out of darkness into light. Okay, so the TV show is called Chosen. Just check it out. I just go. All right, we back. Okay, now watch this. You will never be able to have uh, power over the enemy walking in darkness. We will never have power over temptation walking in darkness. You'll never have power over your tongue walking in darkness. <laughs> Some of us got a, ooh, we got a slicey tongue, don't we? <laughs> I was talking to somebody else. I will, I'm like, wait a minute, you just cussed me out in two seconds? What just happened? Your tongue. We will never have power over our flesh when we don't know the truth. You'll never be having power over pride when you're walking in darkness. Those secret sins that nobody else knows about. You'll never be able to come, overcome those sins walking in darkness. Somebody say, I need the light. Pull up 1 John for me, uh, man, man. 1 John, I want y'all to read this. Uh, we're going to read it together in a New Living Translation, New Living Translation. 1 John, and I'm almost done, that fast. 1 John 1, I just want to build the foundation of this whole series about trading truth. People in our world, whether you're Christian, and I'm going to deal with that in the, in the next one. We're going to talk about Christianities and Christians, because I'll be seeing new Christians out here that I'll be like, really, you're a Christian? That is very interesting because I'm weighing like, I ain't seeing it, man. All right, 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1. Listen, everybody that said they're Christian, don't believe them, okay? Uh, here, here it is, here it is. 1 John chapter 1, verse, go to 5 for me. Watch this. This is, this is wild. Watch this, y'all. Okay, here it is. Y'all ready? Watch this. This is the message we heard from Jesus. And now I declare to you, God is what? Come on, man. I ain't making this up. God is what? And there is no darkness in him at all. Woo! He extinguishes darkness. Go to verse 6. So we are lying if we say we fellowship with God, but go on living in what? Spiritual. Now, how you say you, you, you fellowship with God, you in relationship with God, but you're living in spiritual darkness. He says, the scripture says, so we are what? What's that word? Lying. No, no, go, 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 go back, go back, go, go back. Go, go, go. Don't, too, don't, 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 don't take me too fast. My nerve is bad. My nerve is bad. Hold on. Don't take me too fast. So we are what? If we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness, we need to ask for God to forgive us. How many? How many Christians come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday living in spiritual? I'm just asking. Now, what the next part say? There we go. Come on, next one. Not practicing the. Next one. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. Wait, don't go. Don't. So let's take that word like, let's say truth. But if we are living in the truth, as God is in the truth, we have fellowship with each other. Go. Eight. And the blood, woo, the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from what? All. 
I don't care. It doesn't matter what sin you're dealing with. The blood of cleanses us from all of it. That dirty stuff that don't nobody know about. The blood of Jesus did, took care of that for you. The sin that nobody can see. Jesus took care of that. Next one. If we claim we have no sin, uh oh, here, now this is where we get in trouble. We are only fooling ourselves and not living in the. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. This is why I believe in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people would humble themselves and repent, turn from, from their, then. I'll hear from heaven. We went over that last week, but we ain't going there today because y'all going to make me happy. Nine, go to nine. We almost done. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to what? Ooh, to what? Of our sins and to cleanse us from all, what's the next one? Wickedness or unrighteousness. That's very clear, right? So don't get, don't get trippy because you sinned. Ask God to forgive you. You don't got to go cut no dove, go kill a lamb, go do a bloody sacrifice that probably stink and fly. I don't even like being outside that much, okay? Let alone chopping up some, I couldn't raise a chicken and then kill it. That's, that's going to be heartbreaking. <laughs> I'm sorry, George, but <laughs> we're going to eat you today. The blood of Jesus got us covered, y'all. Go to 10. Last one. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a what? So stop. Don't, don't, don't say you ain't sinning. Don't, don't say that. We calling God a liar, and we showing that his word has no place in our hearts. <sighs> I hope y'all getting that. Is that clear? First John chapter 1, that was 5 through 10. Remember this. You, we, I, you and I, all of us in here need the truth. And here's why. We read all of that, right? I'm going to give you one more. Ephesians 6. Now, here is the trippy part right here. I got to hurry up. I've read this scripture, I don't know, a thousand and one times and did not get this until this sermon. Watch this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world. Somebody say dark world. And against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full or whole armor of... Now watch this. So that when the day of evil comes... You may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, stand. Now here is the trippy part. Verse 14 says, stand firm then with the belt of truth. That's the first thing he say put on. I always read that for some reason my brain interpret helmet because I'm like, you know, you want the helmet of salvation because, you know, I go out to war. I need my head protected. That ain't the first thing you need. The first thing you need is truth. One, one version says the gird up, gird the truth, which means hold up, fasten, equip. Uh, it holds it, fastens it, it secures it. We have to have truth if we're going to go to war against Satan. It's the first thing you need. Faith, I got you. You need truth. You need Christ. You need the light. Amen? 
If we are going to combat the lies from the enemy, we must gird ourselves with the truth first. The reason why Eve got convinced, she let the devil keep talking. I think it's in, uh, where's that scripture at? Second Corinthians that says, cast down every imagination, high thing, exalting itself in the knowledge of God. Like, the moment that the enemy starts whispering into your ear, the first thing you need to combat him with is truth. Is that what Jesus did when he got tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights? He said, the scripture, I'll take them up high. He says, but the scriptures say. <laughs> Basically saying, but God said. Does that make sense? Yeah. If we're going to combat the lies of the enemy, we must gird ourselves with the truth first. Somebody say, see the truth. See the truth. Ignore the lie. So the big question is, what is truth? I think we kind of know what that is, right? I've been beating it up all for these last 20 minutes. What is truth? Somebody tell me. That's it. That's, I mean, like, yeah, that's it. It's just God. Let's like, just make it real simple. I, I got this fancy definition, but I'm going to read it just because I took notes and I took time to prepare. So you're going to hear it. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. <laughs> he says, truth is is the absolute standard by which reality is measured. God is truth, so God and truth are synonymous. We cannot have God without truth, and you cannot have truth without God. Amen. So if we reword that definition, it says God is the absolute standard by which reality is measured. The Bible is not just a book about truth. It is the subject of truth. It is truth. It does, not, it does not matter what everybody else tells you. Listen to me carefully, because a lot of, this is the problem with our age. We got too much information. There was a time you had to go actually go read a cyclopedia. We used to have one in our house. It was, uh, uh, I mean, it was books, like a, a gang of books that was like letters A, B, C, D. And if you wanted to pull something out of A, you got everything in there is A, is a encyclopedia. Then you got to go to another one. Now you can just type Google. Google, what's two plus two? <laughs> That's the problem with our age. We got, too, we got access to too much information. And now it's confusing us. And now we trade in truth for lies. Because you say it enough times, now it sounds like the truth. That's all you need is somebody to share a post on social media and it go viral. Now it's true. Yeah. Jamie Foxx is a clone. Wait a minute. What? That don't even. How that? What? <laughs> I don't know. That was, a, that was a story that was going around. I was like, wait, they cloning people now? I mean, I don't know. <sighs> the Bible is the truth. We need the word of God in our hearts in order to combat the lies of Satan in this world. If you notice, the world is accepting lies and trying to make them true. They're trading the truth for lies. And we're going to go in more detail next week. I just want to lay this foundation. We're going to go. We're going to go. <laughs> see, see how the pastor <laughs> He like, talk about it. I'm going to talk. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I promise. <laughs> but uh, we, got, we got to understand that if you're going to say you're a Christian, you got to be the, believe the whole Bible. Don't just pick the parts you agree with. Believe the whole thing. Believe the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you. I'm just saying. John 1 says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory in the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. I believe it was in John also that said those who worship me was worship me in spirit and in people want to do the spirit part but don't want the truth part. 
Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Watch this part. I love this one. And I'll stop here. I love this one. John 8. Write this one down. John 8, 31 and 32. John 8, 31, 32. John 8, 31, 32. The Jews who believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings... You are my disciples. Verse 32 says, then you will know the truth and the truth will make you. If you want to be true, I mean, excuse me, if you want to be free, guess what you need? And it's sad. Most of us asking for freedom because, and still holding on to a lie. That don't make sense. It's not going to work. I don't care how many try you try. It's not going to work. You will never be free basing it off of a lie. Baby, you cannot sing. I'm sorry. Stop trying and wasting your money. You can't sing. You try something else. <laughs> I remember my dad used to play. I used to play. I used to play the uh, saxophone. When I first started, I was trash. <laughs> I even hated it. I was like, I gotta pray a stupid thing on Saturday morning. <laughs> but I got good at it though. <laughs> but I wonder if my dad was questioning, like, oh, <laughs> did I pick the wrong issue? <laughs> Maybe we should start you off on drums, son. Maybe we should try that. No, we need the truth. All right, here's your point. I, I don't have like three points this time. I felt like God wanted me to keep this sermon very simple. Here's your point. Write this down. Make truth your foundation. That's it. Make truth your foundation. If you want to put in parentheses, make God Amen. Your, your foundation. If you do not have a solid foundation in God, you will sink. Your life will sink. You need a, somebody say, solid foundation. Write these scriptures down. We don't have time to go through them. I've been up here way too long, okay? Write these scriptures down. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. Isaiah 28 and 16. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going way too fast. Sorry. First Corinthians, just put one C-O-R dot three colon eleven. Three eleven. Isaiah. I-S-A-I-A-H. Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen. Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen. Go to uh first Timothy. Uh let's see here. First Timothy three and fifteen. 1 Timothy 3 and 15, Ephesians 2, just put E-P-H dot E-P-H 2, chapter 2, uh, colon 19 through 22. Go back and read those. I don't have time to go through all of those scriptures. But basically, those scriptures are talking about allowing the truth of God being your foundation. Um, and I do want to add this. Uh, how, if you, if you wanted to ask a question like, how do I make... Uh, God, my foundation. The very first step that you can do to make God, if you haven't done it already, making God your foundation is by accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. Accepting sal, somebody say salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should have what? That's the first step. Accepting Jesus, not just as your Savior, but your Lord and Savior. Okay, so there's some, some, some next steps after salvation. Because people get saved and then they be wild. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. So you want to you wanna accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Uh, write down Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9 talks about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus is who he says he is. 
He's the son of God. He's the savior of the world. He's the light of the world. And when you accept him, you are no longer that same person. You are, with the Bible, a new King James says, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen? Well, we thank God. Come on, give God a head cup of praise this morning. Let's go ahead and stand. If you are in this building and you have been believing a lie, whether that's a lie about yourself or a lie about God, I want you to either come to the altar, you can come to the altar, because some of us, I didn't even touch on this, some of us is believing a lie about ourselves. You don't think you're good enough. You're less than, even I'll never shake this addiction. That's a lie. That Satan wants you to continue to run cycles over and over and over again so he can keep you in darkness. Does that make sense? And if you want to come down, you can come down to the altar. You can stay where you're at. Um, We're going to pray a prayer. And I'm just going to believe God that we will never trade his truth for a lie for poison so father in the name of jesus lord we thank you this morning for your word thank you for allowing us to hear truth biblical truth we thank you that it's through your son jesus that we can overcome anything it's because of the blood of jesus christ and he died on the cross for our sins, we don't have to live the same way that we live. And God, we pray that your truth will enter our hearts that will cause transformation in our lives. Do not allow us to remain the same. Bring us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We pray and we repent, Father, for all of our sins. Forgive us for trading the truth for the lie. Help us, Father. Every day, when we walk out of these doors today, help us not be consumed with a lie. Help us combat the lie with the truth. Help us to study, to show ourselves approved by you. Help us live a life the way that you intended for us to live. We cannot do this separate from you. We cannot do it separate, absent of truth. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, direct us in all of our ways. Help us never to lean on our own understanding. Give us the grace and mercy we need to live this life here on earth. And we call this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God a head clap of praise this morning. Back in the-